hello everybody and welcome to the first installment of watercolor with George Curtis I hope to do more of these and explain some techniques but this is my first one so here we go so what I started with is I misketed these areas out those reflecting areas that's misket it just keeps a really bright nice white so that you don't harm those really bright whites that you need to really bring the painting alive and back there on the bars that is just sort of a light sepia and burnt umber and what I did to get the texture of the bars is while it was drying I um, spritzed it with a little bit of water with a toothbrush and it really gives a nice the water gets in there while it's drying and it, the water spreads out and it gives a nice rust look so to get that first little hair texture right there on his neck and the bottom of his head is just a rough brush. Mainly what you keep doing with watercolors, you do lots of layers and you just keep getting darker and darker. So now on the bottom of his neck I'm getting dark. Then I started putting on some shadows on his neck from the bars and his face was a burnt umber yellow ochre color across his face. Some more detail and dark values underneath his head to really show that the, the light is really coming in really harsh from the upper left and make sure to be doing texture all the time with that um, old flat brush. Some more detail to the face, some yellow ochre on the tops of the ears. Now here's the mane on his, um, on the back of his neck and his back. It's with that same old flat brush and what you do is on the first layer you do a lot of it. You don't leave too many white areas and the more you go the darker you get and the less you put on and it really gives a nice depth to the hair layering in some Payne's gray in the background for other shadows always going darker you just keep layering layering with darker and darker colors more detail around the eye more detail to the bars here you've got a little bit of the orange for the rust color some vermilion in there and I also put some more sepia to get it darker now when doing these shadows you gotta make sure that all the textures to his face, all the texture of his hair, everything, that you can see everything through the shadow. Because a shadow isn't a big opaque thing that just sits on top and you can't see anything through it. And the shadowing on the bars back there, you gotta make sure you get the shadows. The shadows are what's really gonna make a painting look realistic. Um, took off the misket, and so you can see those bright areas on his face and now some more detail to the eye, actually going into the eye now that the misket's off of it. Um, Payne's gray and sepia around the eye for really, really dark colors so that the eye will stand out and some burnt umber on the inside of the eye for the iris. And then an actual black just gets a really nice dark in there. And then what I did to make the the eye really stand out is I used a little um, X-Acto knife and scratched out some detail. Let's zoom in on that. Yeah, so with, a, with an X-Acto knife, I just pulled out some different the eyelashes, the the glistening in the eye, and one thing that I haven't used yet are those brushes that I showed you at the beginning, the Fritch scrubbers. So the Fritch scrubbers, all you do with those is you just get the brush really wet and you just take it right onto um, the paper and just scratch it along the paper and it picks up the paint. Now I know they're called scrub brushes but you don't sit there and scrub with them. And there is the finished painting. So thanks for watching and I hope to do some more of these so see you next time. Bye.